Thanks, everyone, and welcome to the Public Jenkins Roadmap Preview for Contributors by Oleg Nanashev. Oleg? Yeah, thanks all uh, who joined the, um, the meetup. Um, yeah, I will uh, do the quick introduction and then we will spend the most of the time um, on the roadmap overview. So if it's your first time participating in the Jenkins Online Meetup, um, this is an event we host as a Jenkins community. We talk about anything related to Jenkins. So it's user stories, case studies, uh, uh, various features, plugin development, etc., etc. And if you're interested, you're welcome to join and uh, you're welcome to uh, participate in this Meetup. The main idea is so that this Meetup organized by contributors for contributors. So we do not focus too much on slides and presentations instead of that we facilitate live discussion uh, we invite you to participate in this discussion for example you can submit your questions uh, later after uh, the presentation we can uh, have an open discussion um, and uh, yeah um, this is uh, the main idea for these meetups thanks to continuous delivery foundation and uh, Claudis uh, who sponsored uh, the meetup and let's proceed with the talk so if you haven't met me yet, uh, my name is Oleg Nashov. I'm a Jenkins core maintainer and I'm one of uh, Jenkins governance board members. Um, I work on uh, various initiatives, including um, improving the Jenkins community, driving uh, uh, architecture changes, and I also maintain uh, multiple plugins, uh, probably too many, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm doing my best to uh, improve the Jenkins ecosystem. Um, at this meetup, actually, I will be speaking of uh, one of the efforts I was working uh, over the past several months. It's public Jenkins roadmap, and it wasn't only me working on that. It uh, was a joint effort by multiple contributors to the project in order to uh, provide better transparency of how Jenkins evolves. And um, today, I'm going to show a preview of the roadmap. So again, it's a preview. Um, uh, there are still changes uh, going in. Uh, but hopefully we will be able to release it soon. So uh, I mostly focus Jenkins contributors, maintainers, and advanced users who want to understand uh, where the uh, project goes, and how it evolves, and what uh, new features uh, to expect in the future. And especially if you can see the contributing to the project, I hope uh, this talk uh, will be interesting to you. At the same time, I won't be presenting any features uh, per se today. So my main focus is process um, and uh, um, uh, overview of the roadmap in general. Okay. If you have any questions uh, during the presentation, uh, please use Zoom Q&A. Uh, Mark uh, is an event host today. Uh, Mark uh, will be monitoring questions. Uh, I will be doing uh, uh, some breaks during the presentation to um, ask questions. And for the rest, we will uh, do Q&A at the end of the talk. After the meetup, uh, if you want to discuss roadmap, uh, there is a roadmap dis discussion thread in the Jenkins developer mailing list. You can find um, all the information there. And there is also a feedback form where you can share your uh, feedback about this meetup and also feedback about the roadmap and the features you would like to see in the project. So if you have uh, a few minutes to fill in uh, this feedback form after the meetup, it will be much appreciated. Uh, all the slides are already available in public. There is a link, uh, bit.ly slash Jenkins dash meetup dash roadmap. So you can just go to this link and find uh, all the information there. Okay, uh, let's uh, start the discussion. Um, I will begin with a short history dive because yeah, Jenkins is a uh, quite old project. It has been uh, started more than 50 years ago, and uh, there is a lot of uh, things which happened uh, in the project over time. Um, I will reference a Kosuke's blog post from 2018 about shifting gears, uh, where he referenced three main factors of success of the Jenkins project. So first one is extensibility. You can use Jenkins for any use case. It's basically automation tool, uh, which can adjust for your need, whether it's CI, whether it's CD, DevOps, etc., etc. Um, also, this tool is general purpose, so basically you can apply it uh, to um, any uh, domain, any industry, and also any automation use case. And last but not least, it's a uh, Jenkins community. Uh, Jenkins community is what is driving, uh, driving the project and what uh, helps it to evolve, uh, and uh, um, this is um, a great experience for me and for, I hope, for many other contributors 
So what are the main uh, factors of the Jenkins community? Firstly, it's open governance, starting from uh, Jenkins uh, renaming in 2011. Uh, Jenkins project has had uh, uh, open governance where everybody can participate. Uh, we have um, uh, regular uh, meetings, we have um, uh, uh, mailing lists, and the most of activities happen through these channels. Um, also, Jenkins evolution is largely defined by contributors. So what it means, the project uh, evolves in the directions uh, where we receive contributions. So it means that if somebody wants to implement a feature or implement a tool integration, if uh, there is a contributor, then this feature happens. If there is no contributors, then uh, yes, this feature doesn't happen, but it is a separate set. But uh, yeah, this is what uh, helped uh, Jenkins uh, uh, to go and to provide integrations with modern tools and with the Quatica system because again, everybody can implement uh, uh, what they needed uh, and uh, yeah, we provide an open, open ecosystem for that. Um, and uh, it's open uh, to any contributor. Uh, so whether you're an individual contributor or a large company using uh, Jenkins and probably shipping if it's an enterprise tool or providing support, consulting for that, uh, you're welcome in the Jenkins community. You're welcome to participate in any meetings and uh, we try to improve uh, this experience. Um, at the same time, uh, Jenkins community provides a lot of freedom. So if you're a maintainer of a plugin or of another company, uh, basically you have uh, full powers there. So you know that there are 1,700 plugins uh, in Jenkins, but basically every plugin, uh, every plugin maintainer uh, team is an independent uh, entity in the Jenkins project, and they can uh, make decisions about the evolution of their components, uh, about uh, uh, rules, contributing guidelines, etc. So while we host uh, these plugins. Um, um, uh, there is no strict guidelines and uh, um, everything is quite relaxed. Uh, this uh, has been uh, uh, our approach in Jenkins uh, from the very beginning. And for the record, I do not think that uh, this approach needs to be changed uh, in principle because it works uh, uh, really well. Uh, so yeah, I mentioned the 700 plugins and uh, there is a lot of um, changes in Jenkins. Uh, over 15 years, we have uh, uh, become the most, uh, well, basically the biggest uh, automation uh, project, at least open source project in the world. Uh, there are uh, more than uh, 250,000 installations. Uh, this is only once which uh, submit uh, uh, statistics. And the um, Jenkins project keeps go growing. So every year we receive more and more contributors. Uh, for example, last uh, year we had more than uh, 5,000 contributors to the project. And uh, uh, after 15 years, uh, the community grows uh, and um, a lot of changes happen there. It's uh, not usual to see that in uh, such old projects, but it's a pleasure to see it in Jenkins. If you want um, some comparison with other projects, uh, for example, uh, we have um, a diagram which uh, lists all SDF and graduated CNCF projects, and you can see that uh, Jenkins is basically the second biggest project after Kubernetes. And yeah, Kubernetes is huge, but Jenkins is also huge. And the uh, smaller circles uh, there are actually pretty big projects with uh, healthy and communities with hundreds of contributors. Uh, but yeah, uh, Jenkins is really big um, and uh, um, it evolves in many directions. So yeah, you may have used the Jenkins for years, uh, but you can see that uh, there is evolution um, of the project and uh, there is a lot of new features being introduced. So just to highlight some which have been uh, introduced relatively recently in the Jenkins project, it's pipeline as code, um, it doesn't mean only a Jenkins pipeline plugin ecosystem. You can use other tools like job DSL, um, other plugins, but you can define uh, your CI CD pipelines as code. Also, configuration as code, which allows to build uh, the entire system as code uh, to apply infrastructure code and DevOps practices uh, to Jenkins management. Um, and along this pipeline as code, basically, you can manage your entire instance as code. Um, we uh, keep introducing new plugins and integrations for uh, many tools. Um, how it happens, if somebody wants an integration, if they contribute time, uh, then uh, this uh, 
feature happens. And uh, again, uh, for the most of uh, recent tools, uh, we are happy to provide uh, uh, plugins from the Jenkins update centers. Also, uh, Jenkins uh, doesn't stay as it used to be, let's say, in 2008 when there was a word file and uh, several distributions. Um, it provides uh, a modern packaging, for example, for Docker, for Kubernetes Wilhelm. Also, there is a new project uh, which provides a Jenkins creator for Kubernetes. And there is a lot of um, other changes in packaging and you know, ways how we distribute the project. And also there are distributions for public cloud. So in many cases, you don't have to spend too much time on the configuring your Jenkins and to setting up uh, it up uh, because uh, there are also packages which provide uh, required plugins and configurations to quickly bootstrap your uh, Jenkins instance in the cloud. Uh, I just uh, mentioned a few projects. Uh, there is a lot more of them. Uh, but I want to highlight that um, uh, the project uh, evolves well and uh, there is a lot of uh, changes happening in the project. At the same time, uh, there are some obstacles uh, which we hit and we, uh, um, uh, there are, these obstacles are not exactly new to open source communities. Uh, we are no exception uh, in this rule and yeah, just to list a few of them. Firstly, uh, taking the size of the project, we've got a lot of isolated some communities. Again, yeah, uh, having full independence in plugins is great, but at the same time, uh, for example, there are common uh, process and expectations from users for them. security process, and um, we still need to deliver on these expectations. And when uh, there are multiple communities, uh, we should do not uh, uh, frequently communicate with each other. Um, there is a lot of uh, disconnect happening. And again, we experienced it in our project and we try to fight with it. Also, there is a lack of transparency. It's not because there is intentional lack of transparency. You can go to Jira, you can go to mailing list, and you can discover a lot of information and also on GitHub. At the same time, you as a user, uh, if you just go to the Jenkins website, uh, yeah, you may struggle to find uh, information you need. So you do not know where to start. You do not uh, know where the project is going. Yes, uh, by investing a lot of time, uh, you can find this information. Uh, but it's hard to, uh, to understand how some decisions are made, uh, what are the plans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also, um, it may be perceived as a lack of focus because, again, as I said, um, Jenkins evolution happens in directions where we get contributions, and it means that uh, if there are 100 contributors uh, interested in different topics, so then the, yeah, Jenkins may be evolving in 100 different directions. It may be good uh, from the project diversity standpoint, but at the same time, uh, for a standalone contributor uh, or just user, it's hard to understand what actually happens in the project. Um, and the uh, same issue from another side, we have a lot of contributors, but if there is a, a big initiative or if there is a major cause in the project, uh, for example, if we need to deliver a big feature like configuration as code, if you, uh, if you just want to, uh, to address a security vulnerability, which spans across multiple components and hopefully not announced in public, then it's hard to facilitate the community because it's organized in, in a uh, quite different way and it um, has been a challenge for us for a long time. Uh, at the same time, uh, if you're interested to join initiatives, it may be also hard because even if there is a lot of initiatives, uh, you cannot find information how to join, how to contribute, and how to participate in a particular initiative. Uh, in some cases, you can find this information. In some cases, it's very hidden uh, or implicit, uh, maybe obvious to experienced contributors, but uh, probably not obvious uh, to the community in general. And uh, with all these factors, uh, with a huge community, Jenkins has a relatively small core team. Um, uh, so what core team means? It's not the Jenkins core maintainers. It's uh, a, a team of contributors uh, who are interested in the project and ecosystem in general, who invest their time to maintain the ecosystem in general, not particular components. And uh, for me, these contributors are the backbone of the community because they help uh, the project to grow. They uh, help other contributors uh, to join the project. Uh, they uh, facilitate various programs, provide expertise, and this is critical for the open source community. Uh, so um, these uh, are common issues for many open source projects. I hope I do not provide 
so there is nothing uh, really um, shocking there, I hope. Uh, but actually, we are well aware about uh, these issues. And uh, over past years, actually, uh, there was a lot of consolidation efforts in the Jenkins community. And it started a long ago. So, for example, in 2012, uh, there was open governance introduced in the project, the governance meeting introduced, which allowed to discuss common project matters and um, uh, to agree on particular decisions, um, including strategy ones. In 2015, um, uh, there were teams and Jenkins officers introduced. So governance board originally consisted from three members. Uh, we also added three officers. We introduced uh, multiple sub-projects like infrastructure, Jenkins library meetups, uh, later technical projects like remoting or Jenkins server green. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, helped us to uh, create a group of contributors focusing on particular efforts uh, to um, uh, somehow coordinate these efforts uh, within uh, these groups. In 2016, we also started outreach programs uh, with the main goal to onboard contributors and uh, to onboard uh, not only new contributors, but also to onboard the contributors uh, from uh, plugins and other peripheral sub-communities to the core team. So basically growing this uh, uh, smaller core team, which basically uh, focuses on uh, sustainability of the project. Um, then in 2017, uh, we got the Jenkins Enhancements proposal process. So basically it's a process uh, which allows to publicly propose uh, changes, including uh, architecture ones, process ones. And um, uh, this process uh, by now got more than uh, 40 jobs submitted and many of them have been implemented. Um, so yeah, it helped us again to become more transparent about uh, the initiatives we have uh, and uh, to provide the venue for reviews and discussions. Uh, in 2018, uh, we introduced uh, special interest groups. Um, it's basically working groups interested on particular topics. For example, a platform special interest group uh, was the first one to be created. Then there was cloud native uh, special interest group, uh, advocacy, Chinese localization, etc., etc. So these working groups focus on particular topics in the community and keep uh, um, the evolution. They have their own plans. So they try to facilitate contributors to their seeks and they deliver on uh, various initiatives within their scope of interest. In 2019, um, uh, there was uh, advocacy and outreach seek introduced, and one of objectives of this seek was to actually uh, grow awareness about the project, uh, grow contributions, and help new contributors to join the project uh, and to be efficient there. Um, uh, this seek took over various events, outreach programs, and also uh, various things like contributing documentation, and uh, it uh, helped us uh, to. Uh, in, uh, get more contributors and uh, to provide uh, the support from the very beginning of the contribution experience. Then in 2019, we had a governance board elections. So our governance board uh, grew from uh, three people uh, to five. Uh, we also restarted the governance meeting, which, uh, which we were a bit dormant for um, a few months before that. And uh, the project started evolving in uh, many directions uh, because uh, when we have uh, more governance board members and uh, when uh, governance uh, board members start uh, getting involved in particular initiatives and start facilitating these initiatives, again, we can have uh, more focus on particular areas. So this is uh, the current state. And actually, if you consider Jenkins community as chaos, it's not. There is a lot of various community entities uh, available in the project. And uh, these entities uh, grow, they have plans. So from the project standpoint, we actually do have some plans. We do have some transparency. We do have ways to contribute. But uh, there is still difference between uh, a project and a community, because community involves uh, Jenkins users, uh, um, um, uh, adopters who are not uh, fully involved in the project, etc., etc. And since we have some transparency inside, maybe we could um, also provide some uh, transparency outside so that uh, um, we can um, help users to understand what's going on in the project. So yeah, it was a quite long introduction, uh, but yeah, are there any questions before we move on to the roadmap? I, I haven't seen any, but I was mm -hmm. I was particularly impressed by your observation on the transparency. It was mm -hmm. becoming public about our plans makes it so that people can see 
very rapidly where we're going, not just having to do an awful lot of research to go find the direction in amongst all the public resources we have. So, so exactly. I, I love this, this for that reason. It makes it consistent and consolidated so that people can find it readily. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's move on and let's finally talk about the roadmap. So yeah, a public Jenkins roadmap is uh, the way we should put a improved visibility of initiatives happening in the community. Um, and um, we started this uh, some public uh, roadmap uh, for real um, at the Fosdam 2020 Contributor Summit in Brussels. In Brussels, it was in February. Before that, at the Contributor Summit, we were implicitly discussing roadmaps like where Jenkins goes, etc. But we have never put effort to communicate a wider roadmap. We were talking about particular features, particular initiatives, uh, but uh, uh, there was no uh, well, 1,000 feet overview of uh, the Jenkins project. So the idea of roadmap is actually to provide that. Uh, we started working on that in February. In March, we created a Jenkins enhancement proposal, uh, which basically documents a roadmap process. Again, it's a public process, so everybody was able to review and contribute uh, to this uh, roadmap and the process. Uh, then uh, we published the first preview, um, and uh, in April 2020, we had a first roadmap meeting. Uh, hopefully in July, maybe in a few weeks, uh, hopefully next week, we will be able to publicly release that. And uh, this is an objective for me at the today's meeting to provide uh, heads up contributors about what what's going on there and uh, what to expect and how to contribute. Okay, just to spend time a, uh, a bit uh, on the roadmap, I'll probably just show it to you so that uh, we're not just talking about the uh, roadmap concepts uh, without anything. So this is our roadmap review, which is uh, currently published on Jenkins IO. Um, this roadmap um, is publicly accessible. It lists uh, various initiatives with a focus on uh, Jenkins users uh, and the community. So we focus not on particular special interest groups, not on particular entities, but on user use cases, for example, pipeline authoring, tools and integrations, user experience management, uh, or Jenkins on the cloud, etc. So um, we also list the initiatives uh, which are a part of the community. So again, regardless of what is the area of initiative, you can put it on the roadmap. So for example, here we have developer tools and services, uh, basically uh, um, uh, initiatives which help um, contributors to develop Jenkins. Also, we have initiatives uh, focused on uh, uh, contributor onboarding and uh, facilitating Jenkins contributors um, uh, on uh, advocacy, on reach, um, and also on internal stuff like uh, Jenkins in, in infrastructure. So there is parts uh, of an infrastructure vis which are visible for you. I will just click this button. So for example, uh, we have an initiative related uh, to modernizing Jenkins mirrors. It's a part of user experience because it makes um, the infrastructure more stable. It provides uh, plugins. It provides faster setup of plugins. But at the same time, some projects are basically hidden and have uh, no user impact. Still, they're important for the project sustainability and for its evolution. So we list it uh, on the uh, roadmap. And yeah, last but not least, we have governance listed. So um, uh, these are what we have. Uh, and you can find a lot of um, items there. So for example, pipeline is YAML. They will do a presentation uh, at the Jenkins Online Meetup in 10 days. Um, also, there are various initiatives like Dark Team, which you can already try out. Uh, uh, plugins like uh, machine learning for Git performance and GitHub checks. Um, various um, in community events. So, for example, in May we have UI UX Hack Fest, and you can find it here because, again, it's pretty important to improve uh, user experience and interfaces. And also you can find uh, uh, various changes related to administration. So for example, system read permission, uh, uh, also uh, script security improvements, but uh, management, um, various things like pluggable storage. So you can find all of that there. And same for the cloud, you can find uh, some initiatives there. Again, at the moment we don't uh, list um, the entire, uh, well, uh, there are still some initiatives which might be missing and we invite contributors uh, to submit the initiatives um, if they're working on something big. So if you go to this link, how to suggest a new roadmap item, you actually find the guidelines which describe how to do that. 
And this process is really simple. Uh, you basically go to Jenkins.io and submit a pull request against uh, our YAML file. So uh, this YAML file um, basically implements open data for the project and for the roadmap, and you can find um, a lot of uh, initiatives listed here. So each initiative have name, uh, some description, uh, status, a link to details where you can find more information, contributing guidelines, etc. And uh, some labels which help us uh, to filter initiative. So if you want to contribute to item, you just uh, create uh, this uh, roadmap entry in a fork, submit a pull request, and then uh, it will be reviewed by the governance board and uh, um, uh, hopefully published on the road. So this is a quick introduction of how it works. And I also want to describe how it works in principle. So the main idea is to have open process so that everybody can contribute. Uh, decisions um, and the evolution of the roadmap are fully transparent and that you can access uh, this information about these decisions uh, and about uh, why we made them. Also, there is open data, so everybody can access the current snapshot of the roadmap and uh, its history if you are interested in that. And uh, if you are interested to take it and uh, use uh, for your decision making process, so for example, if you're a Jenkins vendor, uh, you discover an initiative like system grid permission and think, okay, probably it's time to invest uh, in uh, supporting it uh, for my users. Uh, or probably it's time to prepare and uh, to train my teams. It's also uh, possible, and this is why we provide the roadmap. As users, uh, you can also see what's uh, happening, and you can uh, prepare to new features uh, if you see new features in preview. And actually, we have quite a number of them. Uh, it means that you can try them out, and we will appreciate any feedback you share. And also you as user can uh, explore them and uh, for example, prepare to the adoption or decide whether you adopt them at all. So again, the roadmap could be helpful um, uh, for users and everything is aggregated on a single page. So another thing which is important that everybody is welcome to contribute. So anybody can submit a roadmap item. Um, we encourage uh, um, special interest groups, uh, teams, and some projects to contribute items. But uh, in fact, anybody can do that, and we will appreciate uh, contributions by anyone. And the roadmap is fully community-driven. So it means that uh, if you're interested in something, then Roadmap can help you to facilitate the process. Uh, you can uh, try to find more contributors. So you can, uh, if you find them, you can also put them on the Roadmap, start discussion as a special interest group or mailing list, and hopefully facilitate uh, the change you need, even if you don't try to code on your own. Uh, it's how community works, because you can facilitate changes without uh, committing on your own. At the same time, roadmap uh, is a community roadmap, so it means that there is no commitment on this and any means. Uh, basically, Jenkins contributors work on that. We make no commitment on uh, delivery days, or for the record, uh, no commitment on delivery at all. At any time, uh, if there is no contributor, then the initiative may die off. Uh, then uh, at some point, somebody may take it over and it's alive again. It's a part of the open source uh, process and uh, we have no intention of changing anything there. So uh, roadmap will be developing on its own and yeah, that's how we plan to work on that. I already talked about uh, the roadmap. Uh, meanwhile, uh, did we receive any questions? No question, no questions yet. I did. I do like, and I like to remind people that physical maps of roads also only have a publication date, not dates that look into the future. So we don't. I don't feel guilty that we're publishing a roadmap that doesn't have dates on it. Roadmaps are not supposed to have dates. Yeah, there are different uh, approaches in tech industry, but yeah, it's a completely separate topic. Okay, I briefly summarized uh, what we have on the roadmap um, and the roadmap process. So I will just skip these slides. And uh, actually I would like to um, spend a few minutes about uh, um, how it works in principle. So we haven't discussed these uh, stages. So um, we have released stage, which is 
quite obvious. Uh, it means that um, uh, the initiative is completed and that uh, there is no major follow-ups needed to do that. There might be still improvements uh, delivered afterwards, uh, but uh, largely we think that uh, this initiative can be delivered. Preview means that uh, something is available uh, to be used. Uh, but it's not considered as general availability. So what it means, it might be a uh, plugin uh, which is in a preview state available through experimental update centers or experimental uh, incubating project, or it may be experimental beta API which is available but uh, again uh, may change. Or if you scroll down, there might be preview processes, uh, various things like uh, tools which are available uh, but uh, still uh, need uh, some changes. For example, uh, change log automation, we have started using for that uh, more than a year ago and it's still in preview because we know that we need uh, to update it, uh, the process in order to uh, address changes in how GitHub applications work uh, and same for other items. So preview basically provides you a snapshot of what you can try and uh, there are guidelines how to try that. Uh, current is what we are working on. Uh, it means that uh, there is something there, there is ongoing uh, development. Uh, at the same time, there is no trivial way here to try it out. Um, but uh, you're welcome to join this project to contribute and uh, we will welcome any feedback. In many cases, it's possible to try uh, these changes out, but it's just not trivial. Near term, I mean so that um, an initiative uh, is planned to be worked on soon. And there are contributors who declared they intend to work on that. And uh, we expect it to start soon. There might be some contributions, proof of concepts, but generally there is no ledger push, which would say that, uh, let us say that it's in current state. So this is uh, what we expect to happen, let's say, well, yeah, in near future, no dates given. Um, and future, it means that uh, there is consensus in the community that we want to do something about that. At the same time, we do not provide explicit timeline uh, for when it would happen. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that there is no contributors who are interested to work on that, but maybe contributors understand that there is no time. At the same time, uh, we want to list it on the roadmap to highlight that this is a direction so where the project would evolve, and there are directions where we invite contributions. So even if it's in the future, you're welcome to join and start contributing if you're interested in this topic, because uh, uh, yeah, that's how these topics would move. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is our roadmap. Um, since uh, there is no questions in the chat, I will uh, briefly finish the presentation and then we can talk about uh, various aspects of the roadmap. So what are the next steps for me? Firstly, to keep addressing the feedback and to update the Jenkins enhancements proposal to reflect the actual state on the roadmap. Um, but uh, at the moment, uh, what we really look is feedback so that we can improve uh, visualization of the roadmap, maybe add more details, some more, add more uh, map items. Um, and uh, it would be great if you're interested to, to submit your items. At the same time, uh, we do not uh, let the project is blocked by that because again, uh, Jenkins Enhancement Proposal 14 documents not the roadmap itself, it documents uh, the process. And uh, once it's published, uh, the roadmap will keep evolving. Um, and uh, on uh, next week, uh, we plan to hold a Jenkins governance meeting where we will discuss whether this uh, roadmap process is ready to go. We battle tested it at governance meetings, at uh, pull request reviews, and personally, I believe that it's ready to go. Um, uh, on a go governance meeting, we will vote uh, whether it's uh, ready to go or not. So I'm not sure whether it will be published, but let's see. Uh, one of key contributors today is Alex Earl, and thanks to him uh, for becoming a BDFL delegate, because it's not me who does the decision about uh, publishing this job, it's another um, governance board member, so that uh, we ensure that uh, um, everything is ready, and yeah, uh, on July 15th it may be that we actually delay it a bit. Uh, once it's published, uh, we will uh, host webinars for Jenkins users. So today is rather introduction for contributors. 
uh, we will also do social media, blog posts, etc. in order to facilitate traffic and feedback uh, to the roadmap. And um, again, we will keep working on the content and improving that so that uh, if you have something to share and any feedback, uh, it's definitely uh, not in the con uh, July 15th or later. Um, and uh, we will keep uh, regular roadmap meetings like documented in the process. So if you open this job, uh, you can find that uh, there is a lot of items. And one of the items is a uh, roadmap uh, review meeting and uh, uh, roadmap maintenance guidelines. So basically these are two sections which document how we go further. So, and for roadmap review meeting, uh, we will be doing a quarterly uh, public roadmap review, uh, most likely as a part of the Jenkins governance meetings, later when we have technical steering committee. The technical steering committee is on our roadmap. Uh, so once it's um, uh, there, we may change the process, but right now, every quarter, we will be hosting a uh, uh, governance uh, meeting about that. And uh, it's not uh, that uh, we will be updating this roadmap every quarter. It will be just a regular review meeting. Um, contributors are welcome to submit uh, roadmap items and by pull requests at any moment. Jenkins Governance Board uh, will be reviewing them uh, at any moment, uh, just based on pull request. And after that, uh, um, if there is uh, some, uh, if there is consensus, we will be publishing them. If there is no consensus, that we will uh, go through the common process, like voting at the Jenkins Governance meeting, where any contributor uh, and community member is welcome to vote. It's not just governance board members. And uh, yeah, uh, that's how we achieve uh, ways to override decisions of the board if you if you disagree with them. So, uh, yeah, that's all about process and hopefully it will help our users. So, um, uh, two main takeaways about the roadmap. So, public roadmap should help all community members uh, to get more insights into the project, how it evolves, what are the destinations and what are initiatives happening with it. And uh, community members include uh, users, contributors, uh, vendors, uh, adopters, etc., etc. So basically, anybody who uses Jenkins or uh, whose company uses Jenkins, uh, they can uh, discover where the project goes. And uh, at the same time, from the community standpoint, uh, public roadmap can help us uh, to facilitate the changes in the project. Because when we publish uh, these roadmap items, uh, actually we have a good chance of uh, uh, getting uh, contributors interested um, in this project, or we could find early adopters who would provide feedback uh, to committers, etc., etc. So public roadmap not only helps our users, but it also helps us uh, to keep the evolution of the project. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you're interested, it's actually a great time to contribute. So if you would like to contribute to Jenkins, uh, we have uh, Jenkins.io slash participate page, which documents various kinds of contributions, including uh, code, documentation, design, localizations. So whatever you're interested in, uh, in a project of Jenkins scale, I believe we can find uh, uh, something which could be, uh, could fit your interests. And for example, if you want to write code, um, yeah, there is a lot of links. Uh, there are links to newcomer friendly issues. So there is a section for newcomers where you can find uh, issues you could start uh, from if you're interested. Or if you want to, uh, to contribute on larger scale, yes, there is a lot of um, documentation uh, for various items. Hopefully uh, later we will uh, glue these items to the roadmap as well. But you can find uh, this information here. And it's not only about code. Everything uh, is valuable to the community. We will appreciate contributions to um, any area, whether it's content management, whether it's uh, documentation. Yeah, documentation for open source projects is really important. And contact Mark if you would like to contribute. And also reviews, any kind of feedback, helping users, all of that counts. So if you're interested to contribute, please do so. And yeah. Uh, that's it. If you want to help uh, with roadmap specifically, then uh, what we have on the table. So firstly, uh, submit your feedback. So the Google form uh, we shared in the beginning of the meetup is one of the ways to do that. Also, there are roadmap discussions in the mailing list. Uh, you can start your own one or to join existing threads. And we, again, we will appreciate any feedback. 
uh, if you work on a big project related to Jenkins, uh, let us know and we will be able to uh, work with you in order to get it published on the roadmap. Um, and if you're interested to contribute to other initiatives which are already published, please do so. Um, because yeah, that's how the project evolves. Uh, on a particular note, if you want to improve uh, the roadmap, the layouts, again, it's totally possible. So for example, add more details or guidance to roadmap items or improve UI layouts. Uh, I'm not a web UI developer, uh, so I guess uh, the top of my JavaScript skills was actually implementing this filtering. Uh, but if you see some improvements, for example, adding search or providing better categorization, uh, it would be appreciated. So if you want to contribute to these areas, uh, yeah, you're welcome to do so. Again, uh, this uh, roadmap implementation is fully open source. Oleg, there have been some comments in the chat channel. That, that page mm -hmm. you had up would be great. Would you be okay if I ask you some questions based yep. on that roadmap page? Yeah, sure. So, so I think there were some questions that might be highlighted by you showing people the information that's behind some of these these fields. That it's no. not just individual blocks here, words. There is really quite a bit of detail behind any one of them. Maybe you could highlight for us some of the ways that that can help people understand more about mm -hmm. some particular aspect of the roadmap. Okay, let's take a look. So, for example, here um, one of items uh, which uh, started which is quite popular these days, is a terminology cleanup. So there was a lot of interest in, and a lot of questions of how Jenkins project plans to act on the terminology. It includes obsolete uh, slave terminology, which was replaced by agents in 2016, also master, blacklist, whitelist. And, and for that, we have to roadmap items. So uh, here, agent terminology cleanup is in progress. Uh, terminology cleanup for masters um, and agents is near term. And for example, here for near term thing, I just have a link uh, to the mailing list. So there is no specific project page, but if you're interested, you can find a lot of uh, discussions and constant context here. So if you're not a member of this mailing list, you will actually start from first thread and you will be able to follow the discussion and updates. Uh, for items in progress, we provide more information. So for example, agent terminology cleanup, if you're interested in that, you click on that. And actually, uh, in this case, you just get to Epic and Jenkins Jira. And on this Epic, you can find uh, some description summary, you can find uh, guidance how to contribute, uh, including newcomer-friendly issues. So here you can just uh, start contributing to one click. I was already presented with uh, documentation seek. Uh, also, there is a full list of scope, uh, links to particular items, documentations, and if you log in to Jira, you will also be able to discover a list of issues which are associated with this epic. I deliberately do not log in because that's uh, what you see, what common users see. Um, and uh, same for others. So depending on uh, the implementation, so for example, here system read permission, it leads uh, us to Jenkins enhancement proposal because Jenkins enhancement proposal is uh, the best documentation and includes motivation and includes guidelines and includes uh, references to existing implementations and Jira issues. So here you just go here. And uh, yeah, there are multiple examples, but basically we provide a lot of freedom about what's getting cleaned as long as uh, it provides enough details uh, to users who are interested to contribute. Yeah, some items just lead uh, to the website. So let, we can take something. So for example, a user interface overhaul, it just goes to a page of a special interest group, uh, which again provides uh, information. So uh, any approach uh, can be fine. Our main idea that users and potential contributors can uh, discover information more easily. Thank you. So one one other question was, um, what techni technologies did you use to develop the roadmap here? It looks like it, it's based on a YAML file, but this is JavaScript? What's the, what's the presentation oh, layer? And okay, uh, so it consists of two parts. Um, actually, uh, this roadmap is largely uh, piled by BlueOcean roadmap, which you may have seen uh, several years ago. BlueOcean roadmap was fully implemented in JavaScript. 
for this roadmap, we actually went uh, with um, another solution, and this solution is actually called Hamel. So Jenkins uh, website uses um, documentation as code, and uh, um, basically everything is written as written as code. So roadmap page, yeah, it's listed here. So you can see that it's something like 80 lines of code in total, including text uh, listed, and uh, it displays uh, the entire page. Uh, after that, it uses JavaScript uh, to just uh, uh, render filters. It doesn't do anything else in JavaScript. And also um, it uh, uses CSS in order to render well. Basically, that's it. And Maybe you, you may not like Hamel, but uh, this is quite short and it's quite familiar to Jenkins contributors who contribute to the website. So that's why I made decision to proceed with such implementation. So I can I can contribute by just making I could modify the submit a proposal to modify the roadmap by submitting to the YAML file and then mm -hmm. it is processed by this this Hamel definition and presented to users. Exactly. So, yeah, it's quite straightforward uh, to implement that. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's even more easier for users because yeah, YAML file is quite straightforward. And for example, I use Visual Studio Code uh, to develop uh, YAML files. And uh, actually, even without YAML schema, without all components, uh, Visual Studio Code is uh, able to parse the structure and make some assumptions uh, on uh, the schema. And uh, without any plugins, etc., you get some warnings when uh, you don't follow pattern in existing components. And yeah, you can basically, if you want to patch something, uh, there is edit button, so you can just patch it even from the web interface, uh, even without testing, because yeah, you will be able to test it during the review. Mm -hmm. Elegant. So there was there was one other question that just arrived. Oh, it was it was related to the plugin manager entry specifically on the on the roadmap. So it, it may be more detailed than you want to go into. But there was a there was an entry for plugin manager, and I know that Jenkins 2.235.1 did significant improvements to plugin manager. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't recall so. I'm not you sure mean, I'm uh, seeing what it, what the, okay. the question was referencing. Yeah, there are two parts. So improving uh, plugin manager UX remap. Yes, ah. you can see that actually the link points to the roadmap itself. Ah. What it means so that uh, there is no data provided and uh, there is no data provided by me because it's me who edited uh, this uh, roadmap item. Got it. And I promise that I will fix it uh, by the governance uh, meeting on uh, next week. Uh, but yeah, uh, there is description uh, somewhere in my drafts. So I just didn't submit that. And this is why we need feedback because uh, these items might be missing. And if you see something missing, actually here you can just click uh, report a problem. And then uh, yeah, basically report a defect in uh, GitHub issues for this page so that uh, we can address it. Excellent. Thank you. Now, and I see, so for instance, on the user experience row there, there, there mm -hmm. are things in different, different stages or states. Um, is this an evolutionary thing? Can you describe how things flow from, from the right hand side towards the left hand side? What, what typically happens as they move along mm -hmm. the path? Okay, so between future and near term, um, uh, transition happens when somebody declares intent to work on uh, this initiative in short term, or whether we know that there is something planned and whether there are experiments. Uh, but yeah, basically it's a declaration of intent. Then from near term to current, uh, when uh, the work really starts, for example, when there are repositories, first pull requests created, uh, there are ongoing developer uh, mailing list discussions, coordinating the effort, then it's in uh, progress or current. Uh, it goes to preview when something is released and available to users uh, by various ways. So for example, this roadmap is preview. It's published, is available. You can just go to the page, but there is a disclaimer. That's why it's in preview. 
um, uh, for other projects, for example, for machine learning plugin for data science, you can uh, in install it from the um, experimental update center and uh, you can try it out on your instance. For pipeline is YAML, um, it's uh, available um, in a common Jenkins update uh, center like incubating project. So it really depends on what needs preview. But the uh, general sense that it's something available to, for evaluation and for feedback. And then transition to release happens when uh, the initiative uh, is considered to be largely complete. Thank you. Thanks very much mm -hmm. for that clarity. Mm -hmm. So any other feedback, comments? Uh, just a reminder to, to everyone, could you bring up the, the link to the feedback form? I think I've been posting a different link, and so it would be good if the feedback form link were visible. We encourage people to please use that, that feedback form. That's a great way mm -hmm. to help us do a good job of tuning, refining, and improving these kind of webinars. Mm -hmm. I agree. And if you'd be willing to post that into the chat to Olega, if the chat's conveniently available. So for chat, I didn't provide a specific link. Um, oh, okay, no problem. Yeah, I would recommend using advocacy and outreach special interest group uh, meeting uh, chat because uh, this is uh, the umbrella under which uh, we were working on a roadmap. So if you have any questions, please use um, this chat. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there is no more questions, I suggest we oh, oh, wait stop. Wait a second. I okay. just, I just, we just received two questions. That's okay. okay yeah. So, so let's see. Um, oh, okay. So the question, one question is, hey, I'd like to propose that we st use a consistent terminology, whether it's agent or otherwise, and where would this contributor put that proposal and how is, is, uh, I think the question that mm -hmm. is being asked. Okay, uh, so um, if you want to make a proposal, there are two ways. One way is to submit a pull request uh, to this roadmap uh, when you know where it would go, and at least approximately, where you already have documentation, etc. Um, and uh, another option is to actually start from the developer mailing list. Because um, usually roadmap items uh, include some references and documentation and developer uh, mailing list discussion would be a good reference. Without reference, yeah, roadmap item wouldn't be published anyway. So you can start from uh, submitting uh, a proposal in the developer mailing list. For example, I want to unify terminology or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can start the discussion there. After that, uh, once uh, there is some progress, once there is some consensus or advice how it could be completed, we can edit on the roadmap. It's not necessary to follow this process, but yeah, it will be my recommendation how to start. Thank you. And then one more question came in, which was, how, and I'm going to rephrase the question a little bit. How do you see the roadmap interacting with the Jenkins JIRA system? Uh, is the coupling strong? What, what sorts of, what, how do you see the two of them sitting next to each other or interacting? Yeah, there is no strict coupling. Firstly, because um, depending on the project, it's not only JIRA being used, sometimes uh, GitHub issues are used. Secondly, initiatives may break down to multiple deliverables or they might be largely aspirational. So for example, here we have uh, documentation migration to Jenkins IO. So this initiative has documentation, it has Jira ticket, but at the same time, uh, yeah, we don't create all tasks for documentation migration there anyway. So probably we'll change this link uh, later. Um, instead of that, we actually operate through pull requests. Uh, there is a GitHub project for that, uh, but uh, generally it's a commit-driven effort, which is document uh, coordinated by documentation seek. Um, and uh, yeah, the, on the link you can find the information. Uh, but yeah, this uh, might be different. It doesn't have to be Jira. If you want to use Jira, my recommendation would be to actually use Apex because uh, these initiatives are usually quite big 
and you can see that there are multiple deliverables and in such case I would recommend using Capex. We don't have uh, support for other kinds of grouping in Jira. So if you want the epic of epics or something like that, we do not support in uh, Jenkins Jira, but uh, at least some grouping you can achieve. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, so I, I take that that I have the flexibility to use Jira if it's, if it's good for me or to use pull requests or GitHub issues, whichever, mm -hmm. whichever fit well with the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm approaching, the thing I'm trying to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That seems to conclude all the questions, Oleg. Thanks very mm -hmm. much for your presentation. Anything else that you'd like to provide as summary? No, just thanks to everybody who participated in the call, and uh, we hope that uh, this uh, roadmap will be uh, useful to you, whether you just use Jenkins or contribute to the project. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, reach out uh, to me in uh, the channels we listed in the presentation. Thank you. Thanks very much.